So guys, I've just done a video um, on the Carl Frampton versus Leo Santa Cruz fight, which is uh, has been made. And I've got to give a shout out here to Michael, who tagged me in a post on Facebook. Um, but as the co-main event for that in New York this summer, Andy Lee will fight Danny Jacobs. So this is a pretty interesting card to open up. Andy Lee versus Danny Jacobs and um, uh, Leo Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton. Both competitive matchups. Uh, what I would say, uh, and this is a good fight, you know, Lee, Lee versus Jacobs is a good competitive fight. It's a good fight for Andy Lee, you know, I guess he's in the autumn of his career. He took a, a bad loss last time out and it's good to see him getting another fight straight away at world level as opposed to, you know, I mean, to drop down and build back up against opponents we haven't heard of, etc. Um, but what I would say is momentum is very, very important in boxing. I say that a lot in my videos, but it's so true. Andy Lee is coming off a bad defeat where I thought he was found out and outboxed by a younger Lion and Billy Joe Saunders. Um, Danny Jacobs coming off by far the biggest win of his career. A first round knockout over previously undefeated Peter Quillen, who at the time I certainly had as my number two middleweight in the division. So uh, the momentum is certainly with Danny Jacobs. The home advantage is certainly with Danny Jacobs. And... My impression is Danny Jacobs is maybe a, um, a slightly fresher fighter, had less tough fights, um, you know, still at the earlier stage of his career. I don't completely discount Andy Lee. Um, you know, Andy Lee's got that punch power. Uh, he's got that game-changing one-punch knockout power. I know he didn't show it against Billy Joe Saunders, but Billy Joe's got a very, very, very good chin and an underrated defence. You know, Danny Jacobs, um, he... Um, I don't know, he's been hurt in fights before. We saw him drop by Sergio Mora quite recently. Sergio Mora certainly isn't a big puncher. Uh, we saw him stopped by Dimitri Pirog in a fight some years ago now. Um, and Andy Lee is certainly not one we should be ruling out, especially with that one-punch power he has. Um, Danny Jacobs is an interesting one, because whilst he's you know very highly rated, and rightly so, he's never been a guy I've completely bought into. and He's never been a guy I've... Been truly convinced is elite, maybe unfairly. Um, so I don't rule Andy Lee out. Um, but I've got to say, if I was again, if I'd have gone to my head and I had to pick right now, I think I'd side with Danny Jacobs. Uh, momentum is key. The fact he's earlier on in his career is beneficial. Um, I thought Andy Lee put in a poor performance against Billy Joe Saunders. I thought he looked out of ideas. And I think his punch resistance is starting to decrease. We've seen him hurt more regularly in fights. And Billy Joe Saunders, I'm a big fan of him. He's not the biggest puncher in the world. And he put Andy Lee down very heavily twice. Um, you know, Danny Jacobs, again, Danny Jacobs not, you know, he's not a Golovkin style puncher, but he hits hard and he's an aggressive fighter. Um, and he could hurt Andy Lee. Uh, by no means a certainty, but if I had to pick now, I'd slightly side with Danny Jacobs. But really interesting fight, and you've got to say, this is a really, really interesting card building up. I'm very much looking forward to this one. It's a good fight. It's good to see Andy Lee back in the title mix. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Are you looking forward to this one, guys? Who are you going to pick? Um, do you think this is as good a fight as the main event? Let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Many thanks for watching.